So, welcome to this lecture. So, in the previous lecture, we had introduced the notion of path connectedness and we defined an equivalence relation on x and uh, we ended the lecture by stating this proposition. So, let us quickly see a proof of this proposition, it is really easy. So, first we want to show that every path connected space of x is contained in some x i, right. So, let T be a path connected subspace of x, right. And so, let x be in T then x belongs to x i for some i right. Uh, now, we clean that. T is contained in x i right. To show that T is contained in x i, it suffices to show that. So, for any It suffices to show for any T in T, there is a path in X joining uh, X and T, right. But as T is path connected. This implies that there is a continuous path T such that gamma of 0 is equal to x and gamma of 1 is equal to T. But then we can just take the inclusion inside x which is continuous and therefore the composite of these is going to be continuous. So, this implies that T and x are in the same path component. So, this implies that T contains is contained in x, x i. So, this proves 1. So, we have shown that every path connected subspace of x is contained in some x i and to prove 2, uh, this is also obvious, right. So, uh, let x be in x i. So, we need to show that any two points in x i can be joined by a path. Uh, so, this is clear from ok. So, since x if x and y are any two points in x i then by the definition of yeah. So, this is clear from the definition of path components. So, both these uh, together prove that each x i is a maximal path connected subspace of x. Okay. So, recall that we are a similar proposition when we were talking about connected components, but that proposition had third point which said that every connected component is closed. Uh, that is not true of a path components. So, let us see a counter example. So, a space which is connected, but not path connected. Okay. So, first consider, so let us make a picture of this space.
So, this is 1 and let us take half and this is 1 by 3, and this is 1 by 4 and, and this is 1 by n. Right? So, at each of these 1 by n's, we make a straight line of let us say length 1. So, uh, and we remove the origin, right. So, let us just look at what the space C is. C is a subset of R2, right, and it consists of points 1 by n, comma y. So, in the x coordinate, we have 1 by n and y, where n is a natural number and y is in the interval 0 1. Okay. This, so, this will contain th all these lines. Okay. So, then we also need to take this uh, region. So, this is, uh, we delete the origin, but we take the rest. So, let me just write what this is. This is the points 0, x coordinate is 0 and y coordinate is can be any y, where y is in the half open interval 0, 1. Okay, so, in particular this point p is 0, 1. Okay, and then we have to take the, uh, so this is this line okay, and we also have to take the x axis, so that is or part of the x axis which is union uh, x comma 0. So, the y coordinate is 0 over here, over here and where x we have to remove the origin and uh, we can take any x. Okay. So, this region in black, so let us say I just make all of them of the same height 1. So, this is our C. Okay. So, this is our. So, let C have the subspace topology. From R 2. Right. So, R 2 has the metric uh, the standard topology which is the same as the one given by the standard Euclidean metric. Now, let gamma from 0 1 to C be a path such that gamma of 0 is equal to this point 0 comma 1 which is this point P. Okay. So, then the claim is the image of gamma is completely contained inside y. So, what is y? y is this subspace that is y is this line, y is this line over here. So, the starting point of gamma is this point P and the claim is if we take any continuous map from 0 1 to C which starts at this point P then it cannot go outside the subspace Y. Okay. So, let us prove the claim. So, let us assume. So, let us assume this is not true. Right? and that the image that is the image of gamma moves out of of y. Okay. Uh, so, note that 
y is a closed subspace of C, right? In fact, so C is contained in R2 and it has a subspace topology. From R2, we have the projection to y, projection to, okay, so this is the second projection, projection to the second coordinate. And the subspace y is exactly equal to, so let's say this is i. So i compose p2. So p2 is continuous, the projection maps are continuous, and the inclusion is continuous because c has subspace topology, and therefore the composite is continuous. And y is exactly the inverse image of 0 in c, right? So therefore, y is a closed subspace of c, right? So now we define this set S to be equal to is those x in 0, 1 such that the image of 0, x is completely contained inside y. Okay. So, uh, so let T naught be the supremum over so S is a subspace of, before we write that, S is contained in 0, 1, right? And clearly, S is non-empty as 0 belongs to S, right? Because gamma of 0, comma, this interval, which is just gamma of 0, which is equal to P, this belongs to Y, okay? So then, let T naught be the supremum over all S in S, yes. Okay. So we claim that, we first claim that gamma of T naught is in Y. So why is that? So since T naught is the supremum. So this implies there is a sequence T ends in S such that T ends converge to T naught. Right? Now this as gamma is continuous. This implies gamma of T n converges to gamma of T naught. But note that as T n belongs to S, gamma of 0 T n is contained in Y, which in particular implies that gamma of T n belongs to Y, right? And since Y is closed, Every time we have a sequence of points inside y, which converge to some point, so it will mean that, that that limit point is contained in y. So this implies that gamma of t naught is in y. Okay. Uh, so if t naught is equal to 1, then what does this mean? Uh, then this implies that gamma of 0, 1 is contained in y, which is what we wanted to prove. Right? Uh, so then we are done. So let us assume that this is not the case. Right? So let us assume that T naught is strictly less than 1. So we have this interval 0, 1 and T naught is somewhere over here. Okay. And let's just copy this diagram. And 
this is our gamma right so uh, gamma t naught is contained in y right so this is so this point is gamma t naught right we just showed that gamma t naught is contained in y so this is our y uh, so we take a small neighborhood u around gamma t naught such that uh, u misses the u does not contain the origin so we take a, so u is let's say a small neighborhood in r2 right so we could for instance take a small square like this a small rectangle like this so this could be r u okay right so then gamma inverse so gamma is a map from so gamma uh, gamma is a map from 0 1 to c right which is contained in r2 so let's just view gamma as a map from uh, the ga gamma as a map from 0 1 to r2 is therefore continuous because uh, c has a subspace topology right and therefore the inclusion is continuous so we can just take uh, so then gamma inverse of u let's viewing gamma as a map from 0 1 to r2 is an open subset open in 0 1 right and so it contains the interval t naught comma t naught plus epsilon for some epsilon positive right so now note that uh, as t naught is the supremum of elements in s uh, the image gamma of 0 comma t naught this half open interval is contained in y moreover we have proved that gamma of t naught is also in y so this implies that image of this closed interval is contained in y right but now uh, if we take any delta so if delta is strictly greater than t naught then gamma of 0 comma delta cannot be contained in y yeah otherwise or else t naught will not be the supremum of s right so thus there exists delta in this half open interval in this open interval such that gamma of delta does not belong to y so now we restrict gamma to this t naught comma delta right so this restriction this mapping to c but the image actually lands inside u intersection c which is contained inside yeah so therefore we get that t naught comma delta to u intersection c is continuous yeah so now let's make a picture of u intersection c so u intersection c it looks something like this so this is u this is gamma of t naught and there are all these lines at 1 upon n which are converging 
at x equal to 1 upon n which are converging to x equal to 0. Okay. Uh, and gamma of delta is somewhere over here, right? Um, as so, gamma of delta, gamma of delta is not in y, so it lands outside, and it also lands inside u. So therefore, it is of the it's of the type one upon n comma y for some. n positive, right? Right, but but now we can find two open subsets, non-empty open subsets in U intersection V. So let's say this is V one. And let's say this is V two is v1 right so then so u intersection c we can write it as v1 intersected c disjoint union v2 intersected c okay so now uh, gamma from t naught comma delta so this contains gamma of t naught and this contains gamma of delta So, gamma is from to uh, u intersection c is continuous. So, this implies that t naught comma delta can be written as the disjoint union of gamma inverse v 1 intersected c gamma inverse of v 2 intersected c. Right? But this is a contradiction. as uh, t naught comma delta is connected yeah so this con would contain t naught and this would contain delta right so that's not possible so thus t naught has to be equal to 1 and this implies gamma of this entire interval is contained in y right so what does this mean so this means that if we take a path which starts at this point y, then it has to at this point p, then it has to remain inside y. It cannot move outside y, right? So therefore, so if this point is, if I take this point, this is one comma one, right? So this shows that. So this shows that there is no continuous path. from 0, 1 to C which joins uh, these points 0, 1 and 1, 1. Okay. Uh, okay. And so, right. So, this implies that C is not path connected. Okay. So on the other hand, so uh, it is clear that C minus Y is path connected. Yeah. Why is that? Because if we take any point in C minus y, so we have deleted this, uh, we have deleted y. So any point, any two points will look like, okay, so maybe I can, so two points will look over here. So we can first come from here to the x axis over here, this point, and then we can travel to this point and then we can go up, right. 
So we cannot do this if our point is on y because the origin has been left out. Yeah. So we cannot pass through the origin. So, so it's clear that c minus y is path connected. So this implies that c minus y is connected. Right. And so this implies that the closure of c minus y in c is also connected. Right, because if we take uh, any subspace A, then its closure is also connected. Yeah, but the closure of C minus Y C minus Y in C is exactly is all of C. Because if we take any point on Y we can find a sequence with the same y coordinate and this sequence we can find it which converges to y which co which converges to this point q okay so um, right so this shows that c has two path components namely y and c minus y and just one connected component. Just one connected component c, right? And this also shows that since c minus y is not closed, C, this implies path components need not be closed. Okay, so we will end here. Thank you.